Yeah. Where you think you want to attack where you think you think you so that gets into core. Think about your training sessions. So how would you build this at training? What's important? Yeah, if you've got 20 minutes to do your line out at training, how would you organise that and what would, what would be some of the key things that would have to happen so that in 20 minutes time you could be there? Or over a season as you build it? <coughs> Think about your like training session, your season. So as you, as you start off, Nobody ever goes in and starts there, do they? Yeah. So where do you start with your line? What's the key things that we have to slowly build to get to that? So if you're running a training session? So it's the, the arrival, now we're going to get in, make the call. So that's before we're even going to do anything, before the ball's even in motion. Then we go into the, the moving parts execution piece, which we're then going to say, the throw, Think about, <coughs> think about, like a little progressive orders. <coughs> so, for example, if I know all the calls, is that going to help me win a lineout? What's going to help me first? What do I need to do before I can learn a call? I can chuck a call in because how many times in a season will you change your call? What What's more important than knowing the call first? Exactly, yeah. So remember, try and build it. Think about that as you're going. Remember, you've got five boxes to work in, so it doesn't all have to happen in box one as well, eh? Okay, couple of, couple more minutes. Some really good discussion, hearing some good things. And then we'll come together and start sharing our ideas. Nice. Good. <coughs> okay, if you can just finish up in your little groups and let's focus back here and we'll start making some uh, some lists on our board, eh? Okay, just to, just to make it easy, I think we'll just bounce around the, around the room. And then if anybody's got anything else that they want to add on to it, we can certainly do that. Box one, what do you think is the most important thing to start your line-out session? Great. And doing what? Okay, before that, you're right on the right track, but before we even go into that, what do are, what are individuals need to do? Do their own individual warm-ups, eh? So we talk about throw. Our hookers should have done at least 40 throws before they come to join the rest of the team in their warm-up. It's a lot of throws. what you want them to do what's some primers a lot of them will know some of this themselves but what's some primers that they need to do to be ready so just some a quick example any locks in here any jumpers cool Andy you seem to know a lot mate come over here and just give us a couple of 
just give us a couple of little exercises there that a jumper can do by themselves. Um, for example, I, uh, I put cones out and I just tell them what cone I want to jump on, so there'll be three different colours. So I'll say it so it's an explosive sort of um, warm up, and then they'll run to that, get ready, blow up, jump up. Cool. And then as a coach, yep. what's important to you as he's doing that? So yeah, I can easily just come and do. So what's, imp ground. what's important? Uh, I want speed across the ground. I want uh, good jump jumping technique, like not just sort of expecting the lifters to jump here. You're really jumping into the ground to get that bounce off. Cool. All right, so a lot of detail around what their role is as an individual. Thanks, mate. Well done. Okay, so if the prime is, in, is our first box, what do you think our second box is going to be? This is all about the individual. What's our second box going to be all about, do you think? This group, what do, you, what, do you, what do you think our second box is going to be about? So we've got individuals here. Yeah, so understanding your role within the one. So you, you know, what your core roles are for the individual players. Cool, so we've probably covered a, a, most of that in here. So individual, individual would probably move to... Cool, so what do we... What do we call those? What's the most common term we use for those? Pods. Yep. So now we call these our mini unit skills. So, uh, Joe, can you give us an example perhaps of what a mini unit skill might be? What would that look like if we progress from an uh, individual working by themselves? What would be the next progression there? What would that look like, perhaps? Um, you have two lifters and you're jumping. Awesome. Perfect. Easy as that, eh? What are, what are we looking for with them? Okay, how, how solid they are in lifting their, their jumper, how the jumper explodes into his jump or her jump, and just how solid they are. Uh, what are we looking at their grips? Yep. How they lift. Good. So all the things that are important to us to make sure that that pod is effective and functions well at that finished product. So it's the jumper putting all his work together, lifters coming together, putting all their work together, and getting ourselves the fastest, most explosive, powerful pod we can possibly have in our line out. Yep. So jump on to our next group over here. What do you think might be... Um, Next, after that. Generally, what, what are most of these, how do, how do we kind of do these and, and what kind of a position? Most of it's just standing in a little group there. So what do you think would be our next progression for our pods there? Bringing, bringing them in, increasing the numbers. So yes. Good. Maybe just a little bit before that, what could we do? <laughs> cool. All right, so probably for me, the, the next thing that I'd look at is go forward. So what would that mean? Walking in. Sorry? Walking in. Walking in, getting some movement. Okay, so we want our, our pods to start moving. So because are they always going to just jump on the spot? So where else could they end up jumping from? Forwards, backwards, slips, all that kind of stuff. So maybe just getting a little bit of, of movement. And how do we test our pods? What do, what do we do to, to test them? Yeah, so we add a little bit of competition, eh? Do our pods always get a little bit better, a little bit more excited when there's somebody for them to contest against? Yeah. All right, so we could start adding... A little bit of that into there. Okay. Our back row over there. What would you chuck in on the next one now? What do you think we're looking for? What's our next progression? What's... Cool. Perfect. All right. So we start looking at our formation. And with that comes our... 
calls, eh? We can start throwing some calls in there and we start getting some movement around there, okay? Okay, so once we've got all that sorted, last little bit that we want to finish off would be what do you think? What would you chuck on there now? Fantastic. So we want a little bit of clarity. Anything else that you might chuck in there just to finish off there? So we've got our line out moving well. Once we've won the ball, what's, what do we need to do with the ball? Okay, so a little bit of delivery because now we're going to involve our nine or the hooker coming around to take a pass or something one of the other forwards stepping out of the line out, so we want to take all of that into consideration. Okay, and then up in here, we would add in our tactical um, for attack and defense. We've got our finished product. Talking to Chrono, every session that he coaches whether it's little kids down here, right through to the All Blacks, he always starts at box one at every training session he does and goes through. The only difference between the little fellas and the All Blacks might be what do you think? Time spent on each one. Perfect. Fantastic. Yep. So the amount of time and probably the amount of coaching that he has to do at each one as well. And so it, all his All Black guys have all of this in place. They know what activities they have to do. They've got all the gear and equipment that they need to perform those activities. They go out, coach themselves. One of the biggest things I, I think I picked up from Chrono was the best coach is the person opposite you. What do you think he meant by that? If I'm jumping in a line out and we're doing pod works, who's the best person to coach me about my jumping? That and the guy, guy lifting, yeah. Who's the best person to coach the lifters about how good their lift is? Yeah. So the more, more that we can empower our players around those little unit skills and what we want and how they can get that, the better they're going to become. If our line-out's not working and our players are going to wait till half-time or full-time for us to give some feedback, how good is that going to be for us throughout our game? If they can work that out for themselves and fix it by the second and third line-out, how much more effective is that going to be for us and our team? All right, <clears throat> what we're going to do now, we're going to, working in our little groups here, so we've got Six groups, a couple of you got two, a couple of got three. We're going to go through the set piece. You're going to go through the set piece. And using this process and your own knowledge and skills that you have as individual coaches, you're going to go away and you're going to do some preparation around some set piece stuff for us. So, uh, what do we have? <coughs> This group here, you're going to coach front row for us. So what we want is just to identify the functional roles of the front row, which would be what? Anybody can help? What are the roles? What are the functional roles? What are the positions of the front row? Just for the scrum. scrum. What are our three positions in the, in the front row? Right. Loose head, hooker, tight head. So those are our functional roles. Right, so if we look at it like that, what are the other functional roles in our scrum? Who sits behind them? Locks. Locks, okay. And who else? What are Lucy's and number eight. So those are the functional roles of a scrum. What would be the functional roles of a line out then? Lifters, jumpers, throwers. Perfect. If you're looking at, um, we're, we're kind of going out just a little bit, but if you're looking at back attack, what would be your functional roles of back attack? Those are the positions. What 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 roles? What does what role does a halfback play? Distributor. Distributor. Cool. 
tens normally your or playmaker. Yep. And then in the midfield we have. Yep. So what do we call them? What do we want them doing? If we hit hit M two, so a penetrator, crash man, whatever. Yep. Okay. Who's outside of him? Their job is to Finish. finishes. Fantastic. All right. So you understand how those are going to work, and then when we get to rucks and tackle defense and things like that, well, everything that you've named out there on the board, net, those become our functional roles. So what we want to know is what are the little mini skills, the key factors that each of our front row need to have to be effective in the scrum and a couple of activities that you would give them to become good at those skills. So we cheated by having Briggsy in here, but he's a good Waikato man, so that's all right. So front row. Oh, don't get it wrong, Briggsy. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Over here, we, I want you to just work on our jumpers in the line out and what you would do with them. Okay, you two are going to work on the lifters in the line out, and then you're going to come together and do some pod work. Okay, and you, as you're doing that, think about how you can use these other people to be your guinea pigs and your, your players. You don't have to do all the jumping and lifting yourselves. Okay, um, kick receipt for you guys. Just kick receipt, don't, not kick chase, we'll just stay with kick receipt. You guys are going to do um, the back five of the scrum, so Locks and Lucy's number eight. And you two have got to do the hooker throw for us. All right? So you've got probably about... Kick off, yep, yep. Just, just keep it simple for now. All right, so we've got about 15 minutes in our groups to have a discussion, come up with everything that we need. You can stay in here and do that, or you can go outside, wherever you want, and in 15 minutes we'll go down onto the grass, and the educators will spread around, and uh, we'll put you through your paces and see what we come up with. And then at the end of that, we'll have a little bit of a review with you, just to help um, give you some feedback about what you've delivered, how you delivered it, that kind of thing. All right, any questions, just call out to one of the guys, we're here to help. All right, off you go. Thank you.